Okay, here we go. Tommy Robinson is Mashiach ben Yosef. But there's two messiahs. And you'll see a clip in a minute telling you all about it. Now, I've been... I didn't know who Tommy Robinson was a year ago, although I had heard of him. So only in the last few weeks, really, or even less than that, I've been soaking up a lot of what Tommy Robinson has said and been through. And um, I can really identify with uh, some of the courage that he has had to have. Now, you may not see from me that, but um, there have certainly been times in the last few years where I really did need that courage. And when he was describing a point where he got tipped off that um, he was going to get beaten up in prison and he knew what he had to do. He had to get out of his cell, get down into the where they eat or whatever and start a fight himself in order that he could get put in solitary confinement. You know, and, and he did still get beaten up in prison a few times. That guy has been through it. And he is a warrior, and he is a leader. You know, he is a decent guy, and he's standing up for what he knows is right. And he's got the courage to do that. Then my solicitor contacted the police custody. Then they emailed my solicitor, which my solicitor has this email, saying I was being released. Then they took me in a van back to the court through the back door. They put me up before a judge. And media reports have said that I pled guilty. These are, at no point was I even asked whether I was guilty or not guilty. I was not even told, and I still to this point now have not been told and do not know what it is I'm deemed to have done wrong. In a British court of law for a fair trial for anyone, they have to understand what it is they're being accused of. Contempt of court. That's all I've been told. What, what contempt of court? I, I was fully aware outside that court, I made sure to point out that these men are innocent until proven guilty. I said alleged, I was non-confrontational. There is no, the judges, and I know the law, the judges have no power to issue reporting restrictions on anybody, or on any information that is already in the public domain. I and I can really see this unfolding. And when I was, when I was watching his stuff and seeing what was going on, and then we heard that, they were going to retrial him for a crime he'd already been released for and that this is the government doing this and that the court date is March the 22nd I just thought boom <laughs> that is bang on um, talking about messianic redemption um, that Mashiach ben Yosef will appear in the upper Galilee in the north and uh, prior to the coming of Mashiach ben David, he will gather the children of Israel around him. He will march through Jerusalem, and there, after reestablish uh, temple worship and set up his own uh, dominion. Mashiach ben Yosef is from the tribe of Ephraim. It doesn't matter if you consider him the suffering servant or not. This is not an argument because we know he's going to suffer. We know that he's going to battle on behalf of Hashem, and he's going to lose and die. The issue remains that we're talking about two messiahs developed within the Jewish literature, developed by our sages, may their memory be for a blessing, and at the end of the day, these are not issues to be misinterpreted, they're not issues to be mistranslated, they're not pointing to anybody else other than who our sages said that they would be two flesh and blood human beings one who will fight the wars of Hashem who will lose in battle and die that will usher in the time of Mashiach ben David and we see this soon speedily and in our days we need to find out three things number one what does the Tanakh say about who is the Mashiach who is the Messiah what do the rabbis mean by Mashiach what do they mean by Messiah and number three, where do the rabbis get their idea of more than one messiah, or this concept of two messiahs? 
So first of all, we know that we don't really see the term Mashiach specifically spoken of in the Tanakh. We see um, allusions to this concept in the idea of the um, Mashiach. And if you understand Hebrew, then you'll understand that Mashiach really comes from the root, um, from the verb Mashach, which means to smear, so to speak. It's this idea of anointing, this idea of somebody being, uh, being anointed, of somebody being chosen for a specific um, service, and specifically service for Hashem. Uh, what we do learn from the Tanakh is that a person is a Messiah, like I said, if he's doing some God-ordained function. So we see uh, the Nevi'im, the prophets, um, priests, or a king on the subject. Mashiach ben Yosef is to come as an actual sort of a political figure, this military figure, figure, a flesh and blood human being who fights and dies like any other normal human being. His role in history is set, and it's set not by what people think he is, or what people say he is based on their understanding, but the concept, the very concept of Mashiach was developed by the rabbis of Judaism from the verses, from the Gemara. He's supposed to be a military warrior, almost a general of sorts, a man of violence, uh, a man who's going to take back uh, until his time is ended, the victory for B'nai Israel on behalf of Hashem. Nowhere, nowhere at all in classic literature are any specific spiritual attributes ascribed to him. He is never described as some kind of overwhelmingly holy man or righteous individual. He's not described as some enlightened sage or a master of Kabbalah. Um, Mashiach ben Yosef has always been described in classical Jewish literature as just what he is supposed to be. A military leader and a leader of latter-day Israel whose role in history is to wage the wars of Hashem against the evil empire of Edom slash Esav. This is who Mashiach ben Yosef will be, just as originally described and all later embellishments about his career, about his soul, about his spiritual nature and his identity may or may not be true. But his fate is not to face death 2,000 years ago. His fate is to face death when he comes and he fights the battle of Hashem in the end of days according to what the scriptures say in the Tanakh. So let me summarize the rabbinic writings with regards to Mashiach ben Yosef. So we know that according to the Tanakh, there is going to be a time of great trouble, and a leader of the tribe of Ephraim will arise to lead the military against these nations who control Yerushalayim at the time. He will be successful, but after his initial victory, he will die in battle. This will cause great mourning, and many will lose their faith. At that time, the Mashiach ben David will be revealed. He shall finish the battle, after which... He will resurrect all the dead, starting with Mashiach ben Yosef. Both of them will go up to Mount Zion to fulfill the prophecy in Ovadia, verse 21, that says, And the saviors shall go up to Mount Zion and judge Mount Esav, and the kingdom will be for Hashem. There is the fulfillment of all the major prophecies, like an end to war and war and a world of peace, and a Jewish people and a restored Jerusalem with the third temple. So, finally, number one, there are two different people from two different tribal families. One, Mashiach ben David from Yehuda, the other, Mashiach ben Yosef from Ephraim. They live at the same time, not one person coming at two different times. Mashiach ben Yosef never takes the throne 
nor is he entitled to it. Mashiach ben Yosef is a warrior. Mashiach ben David also will be. Mashiach ben Yosef will be killed in battle, and he will be the first to be raised from the dead by Mashiach ben David. Right, and now you've got this rabbi who's saying, you know, the Messiah is going to be, the first Messiah is going to be revealed or something, and everything's just pointing to this date, which is now like nine days away. So we are here. It is happening. Okay, so yes, obviously I'm thinking in my mind, maybe I'm Mashiach Ben David, right? And me and Tommy Robinson's paths are going to cross in the future. Well, you know, who knows? <laughs> Just have to wait and see on that one. But he is, he is Mashiach Ben Yosef. He is this warrior that been written about and the Jews have been waiting for for a long time. Now it does very much parallel the um, whether you've already heard it or not, whether I've slipped it in or not yet, but it does very much par parallel the Saint John, John the Baptist and Yeshua. You know how John the Baptist was a big man, a loud man, you know, like that sort of warrior. He got killed uh, Yeshua didn't bring him back to life, um, but Yeshua was a different type, you know, he was a more calm and healing and peaceful, perhaps, you know, in that sense. Well, they were just different, playing different roles. Like they say in the Bible all the time, I will send Elijah first, and, you know, it's sort of, that was something that always stuck in my mind. <clears throat> You said you would sexualize. Like you said you would sexualize my comments that were innocent. No. Yes, you did. No, you on camera. No, I didn't. No. The no. world's going anyway, to This is a lie. Good luck with your injunction. Good luck, my injunction. We haven't finished on panorama and stop threatening people. You, you, you should have threatened Julia Redner. You think I'm finished? I've got another thing coming, and I can give you that for free. Can you? Okay. Good. Go and find a lawyer. Why do we do the injunction? Right. Right. I've already been I've already, been I've already right. dissected every one of your comments. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. I've done as read the worst possible way. I can defend every one of your comments. Yes, I can. And I will. You're not going to all I'm saying. The establishment, you work for the establishment. None of these people are the establishment. No, you're working for the establishment. You're working with the government. You're working with the government. And you're all going against the British government. This is a campaign. You're under scrutiny. 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 And why would, you, why would you be creating one? Why would you tell someone what to say about it? Why would you I tell them? I didn't do that, and you're mischaracterizing me. You didn't do that. Everyone's going to watch this. No, I know everyone's going to watch it, and it will be good fun. But more people will watch it. Good fun. You, 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 you find telling them, no, no, please, no, please, please. This is my life, John. It's my life. You, it's not you, it's not you, it's not you, it's you, you find it fun. You find it fun to tell someone that an innocent comedy is sexualized. Do you know what that would do to my family? Do you know what that would do to my children? Do you know what you're doing? Do you know what you're doing to my family? You have no idea what you're doing to my family. You, if you look away with what you were trying to do to me, you look ruined me. You broke my marriage. You broke my marriage. What you've done is there's only one journalist in this room, John, and it's not you. Okay? Really? Okay. That's it. Okay. You, you, you have your disrespect. You have your disrespect. You have your disgrace. And, you're, and in fact, anyone who's been taken down by Panawara, anyone, has to challenge now, because there is no integrity in any of the work you've done. You are a liar, you're a fraud, you're a racist, you're a homophobe, all in one of you. Who's the right? Okay, well, you're in trouble as well. You're all in trouble. You're in trouble. No, well, I've, I've exposed you, okay? You were trying to destroy my life. You have been contacting people. Why are you a home not hate president? Why are the leaders of a, of a far left George Soros funded organization? Why are they present during the interview of a person which you were going in to give bad information about? Why are they present? Tell me. If this is the kind of way I look at people, why are the home not hate president? Um, this is a long day. This is an establishment attack on me and your party. And you've been exposed to the world tonight. So, anyway, yeah, it's it's happening, and there's such a movement on this, you know, 
all these like-minded people um, call them friends on YouTube getting behind Tommy Robinson and and yeah expose the 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 dark underbelly that is the establishment at the moment and it's gonna get broken down oh yeah one more thing you know Tommy Robinson may class this a big beard yeah you know but it's it's not a Muslim beard it's just I like to just let everything grow and you will see the difference that most most Muslims will keep their moustache short and as you see I just let everything grow. Okay, ciao, bye.